Yo, how's it going, everyone? Yo, Jaina May 3D, thanks for the prime, I appreciate it. Welcome everyone to the last uh, Autodesk stream. Yo, how's it going? Yeah, obviously, uh, this series has been sponsored by Autodesk, so, you know, definitely a shout out to them for uh, supporting this. And I've obviously been trying to grow my YouTube, so, uh, you know, if people enjoy the content, you know, please subscribe. So, uh, yeah. How's the uh, audio for everyone? People told me I had like a... People told me I had like a, uh, like a weird audio bug last time. Is it okay now? You just watched on the industry chats on uh, YouTube? Yeah, the industry chats are cool. So I was thinking of doing that sort of stuff more. Like, um, I know Zach Boxel wants to hop on, so we could pop on and have a chat with Zach if you guys are interested. Not today, I mean just in the future sometime. Ireland, Sydney, yeah. You're ready for some full guys. All right, later, maybe. But uh, yeah, so I guess the point of the stream, we're, we're gonna try and wrap up the asset. Well, not try, we are going to wrap up the asset. It's in a pretty good spot. We have like, I mean, only half of the mesh is visible at the moment, but we have like base UVs for like everything now. So that's always cool. Oh, this needs to be. Yo, how's it going? But yeah, I also have um. So we're gonna be using Eric's renaming tool, which is really cool. I'll I'll put a a link in the chat. So Eric is a, um, he was a colleague of mine at DNEG, and he does his own scripts, and he has a bunch of these really cool uh, scripts that like help your workflow, kind of similar to the stuff we have at work. Uh, what was it? But yeah, definitely go check out Eric's uh, Gumroad. Yeah, even just this simple naming script like helps quite a lot. Do you really like the rainbow pattern or place of the model? So the point of the rainbow pattern is that we can see the direction the UVs travel and we can see the scale is consistent. And the reason we do that is because... So I started texturing this in my own time, like nothing crazy. Like, it's, it's only the start, but this kind of shows off why you make the UVs run the same direction. Because I can just simply put a procedure on in one direction, and you can see all the streaks are going the same way. Yeah, we won't be doing this stuff on stream. But this is why you have the checker, so you can see all, everything runs the same direction. For an asset like this, would you ever adjust the UV scale to be bigger or smaller? Wait, do you mean like after it's textured, or what do you mean by that? You can make the scale whatever you want, really. 
as long as you have enough resolution for like before oh yeah you can scale it whatever scale you want as long as you have enough resolution that it will hold up to whatever scale you need to see it like if we are seeing this like at the moment it's a pretty high resolution because we made it so we can see it close but if if you saw this from a distance there's no need to have this resolution Yeah, scale is usually determined based on like how close you see an asset. So pretty much most of what we have to do now is just wrap it up. Like there are sections I do want to adjust. Like we did some kit bashing last stream. Obviously things are different scales, like these aren't pointing the right way. So a lot of a lot of this stream is going to be organization. <laughs> so it might not be the most exciting stuff, but it's like the most important thing to do at the very end. Like it doesn't matter how good your asset is if no one can really use it properly. So I'm just putting everything the right scale at the moment. And making sure it just runs the same direction. Are you going to move the ones in the negative Udem to positive? Oh yeah, yeah, it's not finished. Yeah, this is... These are just like broken UVs that... Things that haven't... <laughs> that looks gross. Things that haven't been UV'd yet. So you, you can't have anything in negative UV space when you finish. You can't have anything on this side or this side. How have you liked doing tutorials under the Autodesk banner? Um, I don't know. I don't really know if this really counts as a tutorial. I guess it is. It's been fine. I don't know. Me personally, I like doing the streams because they're a bit more casual. And I can, like, interact with the chat while doing it. Stuff like that. I, I don't know if I'll do, like, what, like, off tutorials, if that makes sense. This also, That's kind of why I like streaming in general. Because I can kind of, I guess, like, educate without having to be as formal, I guess. I'm just going to order back this stuff, it'll be fine. But um, yeah, I hope people have uh, found this sort of stuff interesting. So, this is all CD detail. Oops. Streams are way better than tutorials? I think so. Me personally, I prefer it. Like, I guess the thing with streams is they're a bit slower than a tutorial. But it means I get to interact with the chat and just answer questions and stuff. And it's, I, I personally enjoy the more casual thing. Like, I did... Like, I had a Patreon, and I did do tutorials for that, and I just didn't like it, <laughs> if I'm completely honest. Like, having to have everything so formal and, like, planned out ahead. I, I like this much better, just being able to hop on the stream, do the work, and then just talk to people, I guess. Alright, so this stuff is obviously... What is this? Oh, so are the Patreon tutorials still available somewhere? Um, they are. They're on my YouTube. They're not public, but I don't know. Maybe I could one day make them public. What is all this stuff? Oh, this is. Yeah, at the moment, I'm just making everything the same text density as everything else, and I'm just auto packing this stuff because I know the UV is already pretty nice. But, um, yeah, this stuff doesn't matter too much.
The stream voice is regular speed, the tutorial voice is two times speed. Yeah, the thing is, you also, like, on the stream, you get to see everything. Like, you get to see me screw up. You get to see me realize I screwed up, make changes, that sort of stuff. A disease. Okay. Yeah, so last stream, we did a lot of, like, kit bashing, like... Uh, like little details and stuff like that. So at the moment, I'm just making them all the same textual density and I'll pack them together. If it's boring for me? No, it's not boring for me. I I prefer this. I, I When I say it's going to be boring, I, I personally do actually enjoy doing like this sort of stuff, but I know a lot of other people don't like organization, <laughs> even though organization is one of the most important things in VFX. Like, who, who cares if you can do, like, a cool spaceship, but then no one can use it? Like, being organized is definitely what will help, like, make you stand out as a, uh, as a modeler. Because it makes everyone else's life easier. And that makes everyone else happy. Okay, that stays where it is. Yeah, Richard, thanks for the uh, the 14 months, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for the subs. Yeah, if you enjoy the content, you know, feel free to subscribe and support. I uh, I greatly appreciate it. This uh, free educational content. I'm just going to manually put this stuff here. It's not that much work. Um, uh. And you can get the emotes, it's true. So we also have, um, we still have like six emote slots, by the way. So if people had ideas for emotes, let me, uh, let me know. Autodesk should have a group UV button so you can keep pieces together. So Eric's, Eric does have a UV script that does that already. So I'll, I'll repost Eric's. Eric's Gumroad. So he does have a UV toolkit, which does this sort of stuff already. Um, UV one here. I don't have it. I probably could have gotten it, but that's alright. All the UVing is almost done anyway. Yeah, so Eric's stuff is really good for like uh, simulating like what we use in the pipeline sort of thing. Like the renaming tool is really good. It's such a simple thing, but it's really important. Do you know much about animation series and do you think it's easy to transfer from animation to VFX? Uh, probably. I think it's much easier to transfer from animation, no, from VFX to animation than it is to games. Okay, so that's okay. Yeah, at the moment we're just checking like all the details are all, all the UVs are okay. Okay, something is here. What is this? Oh, that's this piece. Oh, that's not what it looks like. Is this? Oh, okay. Yeah, automatic is pretty good, but it's not perfect. I usually do, for me, what I usually do is I usually just automatic and then just clean up. 
The cleanup, it's usually much faster, I feel, to automatic than clean up than it is just to UV. Great. Because we did get most of the way there. Uh, I mean, just stay out. Oh, didn't do that. So you use tool similarities in production? Uh, yeah, to a degree. I mean, they're not like they're not like replicants of what we have at work, but it's the general idea. Like we have, like every every studio has like a renaming tool and stuff like that, because like our naming conventions in general are pretty pretty important. You need to be able to rename stuff pretty quickly. Oh, I snapped that to the wrong thing. Whatever. We'll just move it up. Yo, do I use the unitize tool? Yeah, I use unitize UV a lot. <laughs> Oh, thanks for the uh, thanks for the command, Chernobyl. Yeah, definitely check check out Eric's tools. They're very cool. We're going to be using this one quite a lot today. Soon, we're fixing UVs though. So yeah, today is there is no snail command. There's plenty of snail commands. So yeah, this is the last uh, ordered S stream. So we need to try and wrap up the entire ship in the last three hours. Which is, should be fine. What is that? Oh yeah, that's the new pieces. Um. Eric's grid advice, from the, yeah, the UV, so I have used that before. His grid tool is really cool. When I'm not looking. Will Autodesk fire me if they, I don't finish the stream? Well, firstly, I don't work for Autodesk, and I don't represent them. Let's just put that out there. Secondly, no. We're going to finish, so it's irrelevant. Uh, let's see. Channel. Get in there. Yep. Yeah, I am. I have no concern about finishing this today. We're definitely going to finish it. Well, this is also the thing, right? Like, like finished is usually just when you run out of time. I'm just gonna jump this here, yeah, it doesn't matter. So when I was using when I was um texturing these things, I noticed um that at the moment they go up. But it, to make my life easier I'm gonna make them go sideways. I mean, a pretty simple thing we can do is this. We can just rotate this that way. Oh. Almost fit. Right, not copy. Uh, I'll main panel. Oh, there's nothing there. All right, that's cool. If there's nothing there, I'll just put this here. Oh, they're not flippable anyway. That's fine then.
Тварин и флеп. That's fine. We didn't actually need this anyway. Eric is German? Yeah, I think he's German. Whatever. Oh, future Autodesk streams planned. Um, not really. But, you know, if, if they liked what I did, we can maybe do something more in the future. Is there nothing else here? I thought this would be full. No, I guess not. You always crash my at least one time while doing UVs. I mean, to be fair, I don't really crash my Maya that often. I don't really know where that comes from. Am I going to switch studios after my break? No, I'm just having holiday. That's a different scale, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna have. I'm going on to a holiday for two weeks, so um, I might do more streaming. Oh, excuse me. I mean, even if it does crash, I usually save pretty often, so I don't. I don't really lose anything. You feel like Germans have a fancy accent? I really like the German accent, if I'm completely honest. Let's see, what else do we have? The engine mech. It's pretty good. Panel, we got here. Detail, we have that. I need to put that somewhere. Thrusters by itself. The body, look good. Cockpit. Yep. Body, fine. Oh, okay. Oh, detail is pretty bad. But. All right, let's fix all this stuff up. This is also why it's much easier to kit bash with pre UV things because it makes your life much easier. Then you can just adjust the scale and move it over. You heard, yeah, I, to be fair, like people talk about the difference between the Maya files. In my entire career, I've never, I've never manually opened the file once in my entire life. So I don't know how important that really is. But if, yeah, to me, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'm not really technical enough to know the difference, and I've never really 
Cash? <laughs> I guess. Oh, what is this? What's that? Might do these on separate. Yo, Andrew, how's it going, man? Yo, Richard, thanks for the gifted sub, man. I appreciate it. Holy shit, you've gifted 52 subs to the channels over the last year. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. The danger is streaming as well. What do you mean by that? Oh, the danger. Fucking Michael. I was like, what are you talking about? Hey, Chenable, thanks for the gift of sub, man. I uh, appreciate it, man. Yeah, I, I got it. As soon as you said the danger. Fucking the danger. Yeah, it was really funny having Michael on the last stream. If you guys want, we, I'm sure I can get Michael to come back onto the stream again sometime. Did you guys enjoy that? Oh, it's the rubber. Okay, okay. Main panel. The danger. Jeez, Michael. Yeah, Michael's really funny. <laughs> Wait, why is that by itself? We have to move that somewhere. Pretty sure it's not meant to be there. Michael the Danger Wild. It's so funny, right? As soon as he mentioned that, he's probably going to be known for it. <laughs> he's probably unintentionally started a new meme. I don't know why this is so high. We can bring this down here. Right, I'm going to uh, go to the restroom. I'll be back in two secs. And fill up my water again.
Oh, Michael's lying on his YouTube videos, yeah. If you don't know what I'm doing, don't worry, neither do my parents. Ah, <laughs> uh, Michael. He's a funny man. Alright, uh, let's see. Here we go. This is the new pieces. Oh, what's this doing down here? What is this? I thought I you read this. Maybe I didn't run off then. I guess there isn't really a, a nice way to UV this sort of stuff. It's gonna look like what it looks like. I'll probably just do like a top and then um ah god zoom out. What's the progress of the macross? Um, we're not going to be doing macross anymore. I'm going to probably wrap that up in my own time. Like, not really any more modeling. I'm just going to render it out and like paint over it and kind of wrap it up because I, I don't really want to work on the macross anymore. Just because I, I'm not really learning anything new from it. It's just the same sort of stuff I usually do. So I'm probably not going to bother continuing to really work on the macross that much. And we're doing a lot more zebra stuff on the stream now. Um, with this, I'll probably just use unitize. Uh, unitize. So. Yeah, we we already did zebra last stream, channel. Probably good enough. Whoa, some of these are long. All right. Time to uh, split these up. I missed glue. You had deadlines to take care of? Damn, man. It's all good. Uh. What's what's only the best Macross? I mean, it's still going to be the best Macross. <laughs> it's just not going to be as good as I wanted it to be. I mean, already the Macross has a really a uh, decent amount of polys. Wait, is this unwrapped? Oh. <laughs> Outsource the rest? Yeah, who wants to take over the Macross for me? I might just auto pack this stuff, see what it looks like. Yeah, I don't hate it. Fine. So I'm pretty sure I probably won't touch these anymore. So let's do some naming. Um, so usually you like naming. So usually what happens, so this is my general like naming structure I use. Like this isn't, this isn't specific to a company. This is usually just the way I, I do it. So I have like 
the aircraft or whatever is you guys can read this right i hope you can i hope it's high like high res enough but i usually break it into left center and right and then within that group i have the main things like the panels the body glass interior all that sort of stuff and then within that group i usually just name it what it is underneath plus a um like this pretty much so the sea cockpit panel what do we call it this and then usually you have a suffix and the suffix is usually i'm just trying to think what naming convention we should use we'll just make one up so let's just do underscore uh pm for painted metal something like that so this isn't i'm not using any studios naming convention this is just one we're making up right now let's just do pm for like painted metal or whatever so usually a lot of the time we put the material in the name itself and then just do geo for geometry or you can do yeah it doesn't really matter at home so then i just do this so yeah use this it automatically names it puts the um the numbers on the end and then you just add the suffix and there you go that's your your name so we have our our c cockpit panel group and then within that panel group we have c cockpit panel 001 002 and we have underscore pm for like painted metal and then geo for being geometry so this is this is really important like every single studio has their own specific naming convention so when you start off at a new studio you need to no, like learn what their convention is and then obviously follow it yeah and i actually i actually really enjoy naming i know that's going to sound really weird but i do enjoy this sort of, this sort of stuff because it kind of feels like you're wrapping up the asset so let's do this one can be cockpit rubber instead of pm we'll just do r for rubber and then we just run that and then that boom done we're using camel case yeah camel case is pretty normal there's no need to have like usually we reserve okay so the reason i well most a lot of places use camel casing is you kind of leaving the underscores for the different like the gaps in the information so for example the C, L, and R are always separate from the name of the thing, and then you have a gap for the material, and then a gap for what it is. So this is like one reason why we just use camel casing. It's pretty straight to the point. And main detail, we're probably going to be still adding more detail, so I don't know if I'll... I'll put all of this into one group anyway. Whoops. Get rid of those. So since I might add more detail, I'm probably going to leave that group for later. The interior, interior, we can. Well, the interior is kind of really hacky and quick, so maybe we should just wrap that one up. The interior isn't really that important to this asset, just because we don't really see it that much. That's not too bad. So when it comes to like grouping, you don't want like thousands of objects in one group, but I mean, this many is not too bad. Let's just make it all metal for now. We can custom change stuff if we really need to. Yo, how's it going? I'm just going to copy and paste this here and just do it manually because it's it's just one. Uh, zero, zero, 001 underscore G for glass. Uh, geo. Oops, don't do that. Body. We could go through and start combining stuff, but we don't really need to. I'd rather just play it safe and leave everything separate. 
like you could go and start like combining these two together if you want but it's not the end of the world usually if it's separate it just makes your life easier to be fair So yeah, you can see why these things are so handy. So at the moment, I usually blank, like, do everything like metal, and then we can usually custom, we go in and, like, manually change the ones we want to later. So what we could do, say, for example, is if everything has the same shader, I like it. So what I'll do after I do UVs is I'll assign different custom shaders for everything. So if I assign everything I want to be, like, aluminium, a different material, you can just select by... You can select by material and then use search and replace and just simply replace like the capital M with a different, like the, an A for aluminium. And it'll just bulk rename everything in your entire scene that is that material. So that can be super handy. So usually I just keep it consistent and name everything M. A lot of the time, most spaceship stuff is just metal anyway. But the panels are usually painted metal. But yeah, you see this this can be pretty fast. If you if you have a pretty decent naming tool, you can usually do this super quickly. Uh engine body. Oh, I already did this one. No, I didn't. So this isn't painted metal, this is metal. I know metal is super generic, but I usually do custom stuff after everything's metal. Um, the thrust is a bit more complex, so I'll probably do that one later. Also, like, I wouldn't... I wouldn't bother when you're doing your naming convention, like bother naming stuff like specifically what it is. Like say for example, I've just labeled all of this detail. Like you don't have to manually go in and call this one a vent and all that sort of stuff. Like that doesn't really matter. The only thing you have to be like specific with is if you have like thrusters, for example, like this has to be different. But like standard detail, just call it detail. Like don't don't stress too much about Finding the technical name of what it really is, because <laughs> it doesn't really matter that much. They also obviously get rid of your empty groups, you don't want any of that sort of stuff still around. Does anyone have any uh, real questions about like the sort of stuff I've been doing, or is it kind of pretty, pretty self-explanatory? I guess. Yeah, like this this bit here, like I wouldn't even bother tr trying to work out what this stuff is. Just call it all mech. This thing's gonna be a lot of pieces though. I might combine some stuff. This stuff we're not really gonna see. I might just combine all of it. Um. This sort of stuff, I'll, in general, I would probably leave this stuff separate so you can apply different materials to each other. So like the main thing when it comes to combining objects is you really don't want to combine two different objects that have different like shaders. So I don't really know what the, the texture artist or the look dev artist will assign for shaders. So it's better just to leave this stuff separate and they can have full control over this sort of stuff. We're going to end up with like a lot of geometry in one group, but at least they will have control over it. Um,
Yeah, so actually it's not too bad. It could be worse. Let's see how many pieces it is. So yeah, that's something people usually ask me about quite a lot is how or when they should combine things. And it, the, the number one rule is don't combine any things that move independently of each other or don't combine things of different materials. Oh shit, not that. Metal. Oops. I name metal. Did I name did I screw up the PM of a different one? I did. Oh no, it's okay, no mind. Thruster we can do manually later, um, detail, actually might as well just do the thruster now, get it out of the way. So we've already kind of renamed the entire ship, which is really cool. So as you can see, it didn't really take that long to uh, do the hierarchy. That's why I think it's important to do the hierarchy and keep it clean and consistent, just because it doesn't really take that long, and it just makes everyone else's life much easier. Um... When you design something that has moving parts, do you need to specifically, or do you need to specify to the person doing the rig animation how it should move? Yes. So, usually you do your grouping in a way that's kind of obvious. Like say for example, I don't know, you have a robotic arm, you group like the hand within the forearm, within like I mean, the, the, you have group the hand within the elbow and the elbow within the shoulder. Like, stuff like that is kind of very self-explanatory. But you can always show them. Like, I've... For things that open and deploy, I usually have them animated to show how they work. And then I just give them the file and show them. you have a question within your scene outline do you ever keep hidden objects or anything that is hidden in the outline um so we don't really have like a pipeline to demonstrate like usually what would happen is we would just grab this group and we would check this into the pipeline so anything else in the scene wouldn't really matter because just this one group is what's going but for us in this we oh shit i've got a piece for us in this, we're simply just going to remove everything that's not needed. So get rid of everything, delete all history, freeze all transformers. We do all that sort of stuff at the very end, though. Um, this was meant to be the mech, was it? Yeah. Since it's just one piece, I'm just going to manually alter this one itself. Add on to the bottom. Yeah, so for example, I have a locator here. I'll get rid of that, like all that sort of stuff. The, the sub-D kit, we can get rid of all that sort of stuff. What's this? Don't even know what this is. Oh. This is my man for scale. We don't need him anymore. He can go. Uh, let's see. Main. What do the UVs look like? All right. Do you ever get asked to fix a piece of the model or do you just check the whole mesh back in? So that's, it's very, very, very common for us to work on assets after they go into the pipeline. Like it's very normal to have like 20 different check-ins of the same asset, like over time when it comes to like fixes for rigging and like design changes. So yeah, you have to check the whole thing back in. So usually what you would do, and this is also another why, another th reason why we still use Maya for modeling. Like everyone's like, oh, you can model in any program. Yeah, sure. But what happens is when you check your asset into the pipeline, then other people start working on it. There's a lot of tags that other disciplines put on and use that are now linked to the model. And if you take the model into in Maya and then take it to another program, you kind of risk damage or like 
getting rid of those tags. So it's much easier for us just to import the model from the pipeline, make our change, preserve all the information of the other disciplines, and then check it back in. That's why I, I'm actually writing a blog at the moment of why studios aren't swapping to Blender. I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to annoy a lot of people, but um, that's one of the things I, I touch base on. Is that a lot of the time, a lot of the time people think of the departments in isolation instead of working together. Like people like say you can work in, you can model in any program. Technically, yes. But as soon as you involve rigging and rigging put their own information on the model and then texturing looked at put their own information on the model, it's not so black and white anymore. You have to, it's much easier just to stay within the same consistent tools of everyone else. <laughs> Which is exactly why I think if you want to work in the film industry, especially on like the bigger films, you need to know Maya as a modeler. Because like the film is much bigger than your, your single asset or your choice of software. Do we use CAD? Not really. Not us personally, like um, like Concept use CAD and we get CAD data from Concept, but we rebuild it. Like pretty much, pretty much uh, like we did with this, like this geometry was awful when I made it as a concept model and we rebuilt it to be production ready. But yeah, that's one of my, one of my biggest pet peeves is people are like, oh, it's much faster model in X program, but it's just like, yeah, but at work, there's, it's much bigger than us. Like we have to work together with all disciplines. So we have to share information. <laughs> that was an awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's the thing, right? A lot of people talk about disciplines in isolation instead of disciplines working together. There's a reason why things are done this way. And also, like, when it, this is a pretty big thing that people don't really consider, especially students and enthusiasts, when it comes to work, like, building assets in production, you don't just make your model, check it in, and you never see it again. That almost never happens. So, like, like I said, it's very normal to have, like, 20 different model check-ins of the same asset. Like, I could check this in. Rigging has some changes they want. I bring it back in, make the changes, check it back in. Texturing want to change the UVs. We alter the UVs. I check it back in. <laughs> and then design changes occur when it's in shot. So I bring the model back out, do the design changes, check it back in. Then that has broken the rig, so they need something changed. So we alter the model again, check it back in. Like that's, that's why we stay within this one program is because it's consistent and easy for everyone. Oh, see from Massa? What do you mean by Massa? No, of course not. Every, there's, it's very normal. Sounds like an average day. Yeah, Andrew knows. Andrew works and Andrew works with us at Dino. It's the same as Eddie's studio. You never, you never ever check in an asset and then just never see it again. <laughs> but um, okay, yeah. So let's. What are we up to right now? So the only L stuff left we have is that. That, okay.
I wanted to try and keep it nice and like consistent, like as in like have like the panels, the mech, and then s actually no, this is not all mech either. So I guess it doesn't matter too much. Go. You don't want to be a modeler, but this is this is like so. This is the thing, right? In VFX in general, it's very organic. It's always changing. It's just how it is. Things things change over time. Like the shots change, designs change, uh, requirements of different artists change. Like I've had times where like rigging will get it will be fine with me doing something and then another rigger will hop on the show and request things slightly differently you just have to you just have to follow whatever they want to do because they're the one rigging it put this down here oh engine Oh, we can probably fit this all together into one item. Wait, what are you asking about? Is it legit if I get a piece of really hard gear from CAD and rebuild it from my reel, like saying the bottom? I mean, sure, if you want, but like rebuilding a piece of CAD might not be like impressive enough for a real. I mean, if you do like a whole robot or something, that's completely different. But because at the end of the day, no one's really going to know that the piece came from CAD or anything, and, and it's not really going to matter. If you were to ask to work on someone else's asset for whatever reason, how much do you preserve everything? You preserve as much as you can. Like if you have to alter the geometry and it's already been textured, it doesn't matter if you disagree with the UVs, it's already been textured. You just need to try and do the changes you need to within their limitations. Yeah, it's been an hour, so um, I'm going to use the restroom and fill up my water again. So I'll be back in a sec. You should all have a break as well.
I'm getting some annoying glare on my screen, so I'll be back in two seconds. Now we're back. Are you guys talking about cat? Oh yeah, like if you have to keep checking your work into the pipeline, it doesn't have anything to do with you as a modeler. It's just how things are. Um, let's see. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what do we have left? Uh, this panel is done. What is this? Oh, this is the rubber? Okay. I wonder if this is going to work. Yeah, that works pretty well. We're allowed a break? Yeah, of course. I think it's very important to have breaks at work, regardless. I mean, like, at the office, like, I'll get up every maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Maybe not 20, maybe more 30. Between 30 minutes and 45 minutes, you should definitely get up and go for a walk. What shortcut was that? So what I did was I triangulated the mesh and then I quadrangulated the mesh. But I have them both set up as separate hotkeys next to each other, so I can just tap them both. Here for channel points. Oh yeah, so after the Autodesk stream we'll also go back to um back to the handstands and stuff. So usually usually on the stream people can spend their channel points to make me do things like handstands and headstands and stuff like that. 
we turned all that stuff off while we're doing the Autodesk streams. But yeah, once uh, Autodesk streams are done, we can go back to doing that. Yeah, I'm sure people have stocked up their points. Oh, uh, God. No fun allowed? Eh, it's not necessarily that. It's more that it would just be a bit unprofessional. Uh, let's do modify unit size. Yeah, I'm sure people are. I'm sure people have been saving up their points. You think it was 10k for hand headstand? I think it's like 15k or something like that. That one. And one with the tablet. <laughs> yeah. I use, for people who don't know, I use mouse. I mean, I don't use mouse. I use a uh, tablet for everything. Yeah, even in my I just use tablet. Used the tablet a lot, but for some reason never got used to it. Fair enough. I mean, it's personal preference. I I personally use the um. I personally use the tablet. What am I saying? I personally really enjoy the tablet. I um I first started using it to prevent like wrist injuries. I had a lot of my leads. When I first started at NPC, my leads were like, "Yeah, we've got wrist pain. Don't be like us. Use the tablet." And then I used the tablet. Um, let's see. The keyboard never really problem, it's your mouse hand usually, is it? I think also like, you know, looking after your body in general is always a good thing. Like, you know, getting up, going for a walk, stretching, stretching your body, stuff like that is always handy. So I'm a breakdancer as well. I mean, I'm not, not suggesting people start breakdancing. 
but like looking after your body in general i think is a, a very important thing especially as like cg artists because we just sit in front of the keyboard non-stop why is that one so big oh it's the whole thing are gyms open in canada i think they are but i mean everything is having a we're having like a second wave so i am not going to a gym all right so rubber here So what I might do with the rubber, because I don't want to have like a full udem for just such a limited amount of stuff, what I'll probably do is I'll probably put all the rubber into center. Um, I'm looking to get into game development and VFX being a possibility. Watching your videos is really helpful. Awesome. I'm glad you enjoy it. But I, I would keep in mind, like, working in VFX and working in games is completely different as far as, like, asset production goes. So I think it is quite important to pick one and dedicate your time to it. It's not really something you can just, like, swap. God, I can barely see this stuff. You work on multiple monitors with a tablet? Yeah, I do. Doesn't work very well for me because of the format difference. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't really bother me. I've always worked on multiple monitors with a tablet, and it's never annoyed me. You need a tablet large enough. Um, I don't know what my resolution of my tablet is. It's just just a normal size tablet, I guess. I don't know. My tablet isn't exactly huge, but it's not it's not a small tablet either. God, modeling when you're on the verge of a migraine is hard. <laughs> I have like blotchy vision. It drives me nuts. Blotchy vision. Yeah, no, it sucks. What is happening? Oh, it's not connected. I couldn't even see that. Yeah, migraines suck, and they, they pick the best times to come. <laughs> of course, on the, on the last Auditor stream, I'll get a migraine. Even though I had enough sleep, been drinking plenty of water, had good breakfast. Reading the chat is kind of hard. Um, looking at the color checkboard doesn't help. It's not too bad. I think I also had glare on my screen, which I didn't really notice. I'm sure that probably didn't help. But it's cool, we'll soldier on. We just have to suck it up. At least it's like easy stuff. It's all cleaning at the moment. Cleaning is much easier to do than like complex modeling and stuff like that. Are we gonna celebrate with four guys after? I mean, depends if I can see. <laughs> Maybe. Alright, I'm just going to combine these ones. So what I'm going to do with the um, rubber, I'm going to combine them based on center left and right. 
Just so it's very easy for me to see which is which. Sorry, let's just grab these ones. Congrats on the Dune trail, it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. The new Fall Guys update is awesome. Really? I haven't touched it yet. I know they, like, made the maps uh, random, right? As in, like, they have, like, events in them. Do you use force proportion and wake settings? I have no idea what that is. You have three monitors. I don't know why people need three monitors, if I'm completely honest. But um, I can imagine three monitors would not make you awake. I'm happy. They an they added anti cheat finally. That was the biggest problem with PC. It's just so many cheaters. Oh, the hacking in Fall Guys was def definitely a problem. Like, there's nothing worse than going through all the effort of s surviving on the hexagon. Just have a cheater at the end. Just win for no reason. Um, you know, it says. I'm going to save it before I do this. So yeah, as um as I've been doing these Autodesk streams, my YouTube has been growing quite a lot, which is awesome. So I was thinking of maybe investing more time into the YouTube. So one thing I was thinking of doing is God where's unfold, I can't see it. One thing I was thinking of doing was having like discussions with the chat on Twitch over specific topics and we can upload those into YouTube. So I'll when we do it we'll probably have the chat like really big so everyone can see it and if you guys have any particular topics you want to discuss we can uh, have debates over them if you guys are interested in that sort of stuff debates not arguments debates <laughs> and we're going to be using logic not emotion I know, right? Logic. Scary. Yeah, so if you guys have any um, ideas of like things you want to talk about. Oh yeah, so with like the rubber, right? The rubber is such a minor thing that it's not very likely that texture artists will want to texture this side and then project it over. So it doesn't matter if the UVs are symmetrical. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Who is going to send it across? Flip this. So we now have all our rubber together. And we're going to put it... So even though this is on the left side, I'm going to put it into the center group. Did I get rid of it? Oh, I did. I'm going to put this into the center group so I know it's not to be flipped.
Where's the... Uh, might as well do this. Pack it all in together. The industry in general seems very intimidating and competitive. It's not too bad. I mean, it is, but it's not bad. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that as a reason to not go into the industry. Uh, where's it? So yeah, now we can quickly just redo the naming again. Oops. Obvious. Um, that one, that that one. Oh, that's why these are panels. I was like, what are these? Alright, so panels, they go up here. The rubber also can go by itself. Is that outside? So the glass is by itself, all that sort of stuff. You heard it's good to network with people in the industry. Um, for sure. So your your jobs will a lot of your jobs will come from connections. That's just that's just true of all aspects of life. Oh damn! This this one UV group is just making me sad. It's gonna it's gonna disrupt my nice my nice thing. I know what we can do. We can condense. We can condense this probably. Since I don't really need to be flipping that way. Um, God, I can't fucking see. Oh, I'm not even the right thing. I'm just gonna condense these. Perfect. All right. Time to start over. Yeah, exactly. Just scrap the whole thing now. We're uh, too bad. So this stuff's all panels. Oh god. Things are going a bit slow. Not surprising. There's like one million polys being selected at the moment. So I'm going to move this across here. And we can grab this one. And move this over here. Cool. Alright, so. That looks like that. Where's the center group? Center group is there. In theory, this thing is finished now. I mean, we still have an hour and a half, so I probably might just keep adding detail. But, say for example, your time was up, you can check this into the pipeline now. Actually, let's do something else first. Let's, um, let's do, close this for a second. So I, I always like doing this as well. Like, I'll select the center group. Isolate. Then I'll go to face mode. And then when you have here, you go select, use constraints. Boom. Next selection. Am I in face mode? Yep. So you have to be in face mode for this. And then I select end sided. And then you can select. And if you have end guns, it will show you. Wait, there's an end gun there. Oh, there is. All right, there we go. So yeah, we have we still do this. We do this is the cleaning stage. So we make sure we get rid of I. <laughs> yeah, definitely do this as well. This makes everyone's life much happier, because every time you check something into the pipeline, it will flag if you have englands.
But yeah, don't forget, if you use this, don't forget to turn it off. Because it, it will stay that way. Yeah, usually this is how I find like end guns and stuff like that across my mesh. If I have like something like this, which is really f far away and hidden and no one really cares about, I usually just triangulate it and then quadrangulate it. So I have a hockey for that. So I go triangle quad and then that's it. No one's really going to see that stuff. But now we have no end guns. If it's like a very obvious thing, like on... F Whoa, wait, these are end guns? Oh shit, they are. Alright, fair enough then. Alright. This is why we do the checks. To make sure everything is all good. Turn that off. Yeah, don't forget, if you can't select anything, you might have this still active. And gone, be gone. Yeah, it's, it's always good to make sure you go over your mesh and see it's all nice and clean. When you check an asset into a pipeline, it'll tell you there's end guns. Like it lets, even it lets the other people know there is end guns as well when you check something into a pipeline. So it's always best just to clean everything up. Yo, Michael, how's it going, man? Yo, Michael, someone was like. The danger is streaming, and I was like, who the fuck is the danger? <laughs> yeah, how's it going, man? The danger has, uh, arrived. Man, I got a migraine, so that's not going too well. I can barely see shit. This is why I'm wearing my glasses. This is the last order desk stream, and I've been blessed with a migraine. How am I still streaming? It's alright. I just have slightly blurred vision. So, so doing topology is kind of hard. But I mean, we're almost done. We're just doing like the last checks now to make sure there's no like end guns and shit like that. Yeah, you know how you have like, like blotchy vision and shit like that? That fun stuff. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It So whenever you check something into a pipeline in a studio, it usually lets all the people that need to know that the model has gone in. Like, communication is very key for a studio. Like, like how the, how's the rigger meant to do their job if they don't know the model is checked in? So there's usually, like, automatic um, emails that go out when things get checked in. And if people are lazy and leave end guns, everyone gets to know about it. <laughs> Right. Yeah, this is, it may seem a bit annoying, but, you know, it helps everyone else. This is also another thing people bring up. People, a lot of people talk about the fact that like, oh, it's much faster if I do this in modeling. But that usually comes at the cost of making someone else's life harder. And that's usually why we go to the effort of making everything nice and clean is for other people. Oh, there's an end on there still. Oh my god, it's stuck up. <laughs> Jesus. Why did undoing this not go back? What is that? Oh, it's that. Oh, I can't see it. Triangulate, quadrangulate will do. Yeah, the more effort you go into making your stuff nice and clean isn't just because you want to be difficult, it's more to help everyone else in the pipeline. So yeah, now I can't select Engons, so we're all good. There's no more Engons here. And that's it. Like it, it, it was like 10-15 minutes of just doing stuff and then now we have a cleaner mesh.
my ad doesn't crash not once during the auto stream. I mean, I, I honestly don't. I don't feel my Maya crashes that often. I don't. I don't know where this big thing about Maya crashing comes from. I don't know what you guys do with your models because mine doesn't usually crash that often. <laughs> Alright, L side. Also, when you do the Engon thing, don't do the entire mesh at once. It might make you might make you sad. <laughs> so you just do it in chunks. But yeah, this is a very important thing to do. It's good practice at home just to do this, just to make sure everything's clean. It depends on how important it is. Oh shit, like they these are really obvious. Like I had no idea I hadn't finished this model. There we go. Oh yeah, I didn't shout out Michael. So if you guys don't know who Michael Wilde is, he's the fantastic gentleman that was on my last room. The, um, a few of you people might have seen, but I can't read your name, VFX. A few of you might have seen the, uh, the, the chat we had last stream. Super fun. Yeah, Michael, you could totally hop on this. But since it's the last stream, maybe not today, but next time, next time you stream, you should totally uh, hop on the mic again. It's good fun. Fucking hell, I just realized you have a Squirtle squad <laughs> emote. Is that one of your emotes now, man? You sick, dude. Fuck, oh, Jesus. Yeah, I didn't realize. This is also why you do these checks, because I... Oh, damn it. I didn't realize I hadn't actually finished this mesh. But now we know, because we did the check. Or well, we looked for Engons, at least. This thing should be... Yeah, man. If ever, whenever you want to pop on the stream again and have a chat, I'm always down. You're... Our chat was mad funny last time. Yo, we should... So John gets on the stream as well sometimes, right? We should totally get you and John on for a debate. Well, not a debate. I mean, I feel we all have very similar opinions of things, but we can have a chat sometime with John as well if you want. Yeah, John's awesome. You get to hear John's fantastic voice again. Totally didn't work. Uh, that's all good. Bring stories next time? Michael has plenty of stories. Yeah, Michael, I saw... Did you see my, um, my YouTube is monetized now? I made my first 70 cents. <laughs> oh god. I know right, I might as well just retire now. Okay, so I went to the effort of finishing these ones, but if we find, like, the GAC itself has N-Gons, I'll probably just use the quad drangulate thing. Just because it doesn't, doesn't matter too much for the GAC, I guess. Yeah, I can't see anything on the outside. So, triangulate and quadrangulate. Done. So now we should have... No Engons? Yeah, we have no Engons. So nothing gets selected, so we know there's no Engons now. Yes, yeah, oh actually no, it, it might be US 70 cents, so maybe I made my first doll. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's see, I'll main. Oof. Yeah, we've been going for an hour and 40 minutes, so um, I'll be back in a sec.
You think I got the good shit from Maya, that's why it's not crashing? Nah. Uh, I just use standard Maya. This is actually a pretty good point to bring up, by the way. Like, when, when people think about, like, Maya, like, enthusiasts and students, they usually don't consider the fact that the Maya we use at work is pretty much its own program at this point. Based on how much proprietary stuff is in the program itself, like, Maya at work is not Maya at home. It's pretty different. I mean, obviously, the basic functionality is the same, but as far as extra tools and stuff goes, it's pretty different. Uh, let's see. And... All right, let's see if we can... Well, there's a very obvious end gone here. Usually, a lot of the time, the end gone is just like a random vert. Oh, that's right. We have to make sure we turn that off. It's usually just a random vert somewhere, a lot of the time, the engons are. So it's much easier just to quickly do this up and finish it. So usually I look, if it's a very obvious thing, I'll fix it manually. If it's something I can barely see, like it's inside of a mesh, I probably won't bother. And I just triangulate it. Yeah, I can't actually see any of the engons, so triangulate will do. Quadrangulate, and done. So now our mesh, now our um thing is all quads. Well, it's not all quads, but it's no engons. Does it give me topology issues? Not really. I'll show you what it actually does. Like usually, a lot of the times, if I usually a lot of times the Engons might be something like this. Like for some reason, there might be like something like this. I just didn't see this. I don't know why it would be there. But all it is really doing is just doing this. So it's not really going to break any mesh. If it's something on the surface or easy to see, I'll obviously manually fix it. But a lot of the time, it might just be like a random, like there's a single vertex here or something. Like if it's a single vertex like that and it happens, usually this is the result. That's pretty bad though. If it does that, that's a problem. Usually triangulate is probably just a better answer. Yeah, hey Michael, how's your YouTube going now? Are you uh, releasing anything anytime soon? But yeah, technically the asset is finished. I mean, we can always add more. Let's just double check everything. Oh no, I didn't finish the thruster. We need to do that one. All right. So usually with the thruster, I would have like the base by itself. Like things that don't have to move. Um, let's open this back up again. Boom. Yeah, the same normal naming conventions. Uh, underscore him. Oh, suffix, not prefix. Some studios even have, like, the, um... Like, I know some studios even have, like, if a mesh is subdividable in the name. So, like, that, this information just helps everyone know what is going on with it, I guess. Oh yeah, sorry, I don't have notifications turned on at the moment, so if I do miss anything, I'm sorry. But yeah, thanks everyone for the new follows, I appreciate it. Yeah, for people who missed the other um, episodes, they're all on YouTube. You can always go back and see the full process. So, these are going to be the L engine thruster flaps. Why is this on here? Get off. We have flap A, flap B. Yeah, so all I'll usually do is just go through here and just simply... It's all the same thing over and over, to be fair. So I usually use A, like for example, I use like A, B, C, D, for example, instead of 1, 2, 3, because, it, because of this, I'll show you. 
So when I... Well, don't do that. Wrong thing. So if I grab all these and then bulk rename them... If they were like numbered, it would be like uh, you know, thruster flap 1001 instead of A001. So that's one of the reasons why I do things with A with letters instead of numbers, is it's much easier to have like, yeah, this. You can pretty much see what I'm talking about. And then yeah, we just go through the list and just swap out, swap out the letter. Where do we get the renamer script? Um, Channel, do you have a link? One of my colleagues, Eric, was a, um, well, previous colleagues at DNEC, he has a bunch of his own um, Maya tools he makes. So definitely go check that stuff out. What if you have more than 26 parts? I mean, I guess. I'd, I don't think many times you would have more than 26 parts. In that case, you might have problems. Oh no, actually what I was saying, I do know what it is. If you have more than 26 parts, you do AA. You do AA, AB, AC, AD. So that's how you do it. You would have flap AA, AB, AC, A3. I mean AD, yeah. You get what I'm saying. Yeah, I've had examples of that before. I mean, in the, in the end, all that really matters is that everything is unique. So that's also why a naming convention is important, is because every single mesh, like this is, this is, across all studios, this is very consistent. Every single, every single mesh has to have a unique name. You can't have a single thing with the same name, which is why we do all of this. And usually the easiest way for me to make sure the names are always cons like unique is I pretty much just name whatever is here under its group name. That's the easiest way I feel. You just name your group and then name the, the children of the group, whatever the group's name is. Um, that. I mentioned this earlier as well, but like one of the main reasons I usually just call everything metal, even if I plan to change it or be like aluminium, it's just because it's much easier just to search and replace M and replace it with whatever material, and you can just bulk rename different materials. Uh, I. Oh, you're yeah, adding all these sick commands. Awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Does UV still work? Oh yeah, it works. So. so I guess that's it. I guess the asset is finished now. I'll show you what happens. This is what we do. So in theory, we've finished the asset. This is something I guess, yeah, I mentioned a lot of people don't really think about is the fact that all right, we'll get rid of these things, we don't need this. So for us, we're just going to clear everything out. I'm going to grab the left side. Actually, let's just check the UVs are all good before we do anything. Yeah, UV, UVs look pretty good to us. All right. So what we're going to do is close that for a sec. We're going to grab our left side, duplicate it, 
and we're going to go in negative space negative one Boom. we're going to freeze it and then reset the transforms so everything will go back to origin and then we get here our l group and then what we simply do is we just replace the l with r so what you can do like if you do have like a capital l anywhere in your name it will replace it so be careful about that usually the easiest way to do it is just have the l underscore and replace it with r underscore so we kind of the l the underscore is kind of like a buffer from any other name but keep in mind you could also have l's with that and then you just go uh select the hierarchy then just go go oh does his tool not work that's interesting i might need to talk to him about that because in theory it should just do the whole hierarchy if it doesn't that's cool the b the default one works like that um search and replace names the default one here i've already got it set up that way funny enough you can leave, set it to hierarchy and press replace, and it should just go through and turn all the L's into R's. It does take time though. Don't touch it. It's going through it. It does take time to manually rename. I mean, it does take time to rename all the geometry. So don't freak out if nothing's happening. You could also do it in smaller chunks. That's probably what we should have done. But we can we can just leave this for a little bit. All right, cool. So yeah, now you'll see everything went from L to R. Cool. So that's done. We go to our UVs. Yeah, save beforehand. Always, you should always save your mesh. Let's save again as well. It's very important to save consistently at work. You don't want to be doing all this effort with a tight deadline and then you just lose your work. Like, always save your work. All right, cool. Now this is done. We can simply grab our all of our udems at once like for the entire thing, and then just press up once on the keyboard, and that will fit the uh, the slot. And then when you look at all the UVs combined, everything is nice and clean and organized. So I think this is the best way to do UVs. It's very clear, everything just goes above it, and then the center group is all together. And honestly, if you do your UVs this way, the texture artist will definitely like you a lot more than if you didn't care. Because, yeah, this is good. It's nice, clean, organized, they can tell what is what. Now we drink? Not yet. We still have an hour left, we can still add stuff for an hour. Will I texture it? Nah, I'm not going to texture it. I think Zach mentioned he might want to texture it. That could be kind of cool. In your studio, the texture artists do UVs? I think sometimes it's good. I personally do like doing the UVs. Alright, I'll explain why. So I, I personally do like doing the UVs because... Doing that, when I do the UVs, it usually lets it's a way of me troubleshooting my model. Like a lot of the time, you can see a lot of broken stuff while doing the UVs. Secondly, the way I do my UVs not only makes the texture artist life easier, but it also means I can update the model easier. There's definitely times where a texture artist will do the UVs, I'll update the model, and it's not UV'd in a way that's very easy for me to transfer everything. So that's why I personally like doing the UVs as a modeler, but I always talk to the texture artist while I'm doing it and ask them what they want. And most texture artists usually really like that I do my UVs this way.
just because it's clean and consistent. So another benefit all right, of doing the UVs this way is, say for example, we finish our asset. All right, hypothetically, we've finished, all right, we'll, we'll simulate the work environment. This model's done, it's finished. We check it into the pipeline, awesome, we're happy. Next day we come back to work and the, the client wants to add some detail and you're like, damn it, we need, to, we need to go back to the model. So what we do is we bring in the model. The very first thing I do is just simply get rid of one side of the ship because I know we don't need it. And then I will do the change, add it to the left side and then just flip it back. So we can do that now. I personally don't like this gap. I'm going to finish, I'm going to fill this gap. We're just going to pretend that the client doesn't like this gap either. <laughs> and I'm going to fill the gap. So this is, this is very normal. That you'll finish an asset, it goes into the pipe, it goes into shots. Client sees it, client changed their mind on something, and we need to update it. Without, we're going to pretend this thing's already textured as well. So we can't, we can't touch the UVs anymore. But we can add Geo. So usually the best, the easiest way to to modify an asset after it's been like like used by other disciplines is to not touch things that already exist and just add on top. So add extra detail, don't modify existing. So I'm just gonna add stuff. What if a change is required to redo UVs? So if, say for example, I mean this happens a lot doing damage. If, say for example, they want to cut a hole in this now, what I will do is I'll cut up what I need to, fix what I need to. Should I just show this? Maybe I should just show this actually. I'll pull this hypothetical panel off. Alright, say for example, the client wants something changed in this panel. For some reason, we just want to destroy the panel now. Uh, where's the UV? What we would do... Yeah, let's just pretend... I don't know. This is the change now. I'm not going to go too crazy with like actually modeling. Let's say, for example, we modify this... Oh, shit. Don't do that. Actually, that's probably... A, no, not yet. That's what I wanted to do. Pretend we, we modify this geometry. But we now have new pieces that break stuff like this. So this is all, all of this crazy shit is the extra geo we've added. So what we usually do is we usually get this stuff. Oh, take it out. And then we UV this as a new separate piece. And do what we need to with it. Yeah, so we unfold it. Unfold, please. Oh, oh okay, that's weird. What did I do to this piece? Alright, now Maya is kind of screwing up. I don't know what happened now. It didn't it didn't like this piece. I've done something to this. Why not set up a turntable render with wireframe UV mat and cool lights for showcast and the awesome Arnold render comes with my I don't know Arnold. That's <laughs> that's probably why. Alright, let's try that again. So is it okay to slide a mesh into another mesh? Um, yeah, it depends. If, no, if people don't see it, it's cool. Alright, I don't know what I did the last time, but this piece is okay. So yeah, say for example, all of this is UV'd, right? We can't really touch the UVs. So any change you do, you usually have a, as a new piece. And then we would just get this new piece and... God damn it. We get this new piece and put it somewhere else. I 
Arnold is pretty artist friendly. Yeah, so we would just get this new piece and put it somewhere else. Another thing is like, say for example, you want to modify the topology of a mesh. Like you don't want to move it like this, because this is going to break the textures. But what you can do is this. Like say for example, you wanted this edge to be here. It's much better to just cut an edge like that instead of sliding. Oh, I didn't do that completely. So yeah, you, this is how you would move an edge without breaking the UVs. You would cut a new one instead of sliding the edge like that. So this is one way we can modify geometry without texture being sad. That's also how we do, like, a lot of the time we do damage for... Oops. A lot of the time we do damage for, um, on vehicles and stuff like that, and this is how we would do the same thing. We would just cut up. Doesn't Maya have preserved UVs like 3D Max? I don't know. I don't know what that is. But even if I did, like, uh, destroy this thing a bit... I don't know. I'm just gonna warp and pull this out a bit. Say for some for some reason you did do this to your mesh, now this bit is broken. Usually what I would do it was I would just unfold this one section. So just because you've changed this one corner doesn't mean you need to change the entire mesh. I mean this might cause problems here. But I always try and not break everything at once. Why is it not unfolding? There you go. Of course, if you have stuff like this, you have to cut that and change that. But you'll see, just because this one piece has been broken, we don't have to re-UV the entire thing at once. So you can still preserve a lot of the texture information. Yeah, we'll get rid of this one. Yeah, that's how we uh, we fix that sort of stuff. But yeah, I guess the um, like say for example, oh yeah, we didn't finish this thing, did we? God, my Maya is slowing down. I should probably close Octane. I don't know why I have Octane. Over. I'm sure that isn't helping anything. Yeah, I'm just going to add this piece here. Yo, I'm going to be back in two seconds. I think something is running in the background, which is making my computer sad. Alright, we're back.
Yeah, I don't know what's happened to my computer, but it's suddenly gone to a crawl now. <laughs> like, even just moving the camera is delayed now. Something is not happy on my computer. But well, let's just do something basic with this. Does this happen? No. I don't know what's up with my computer. I mean, everyone, it's not everyone gets sad. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a Windows update or something in the background making my life hard. <laughs> I know, right? Anyway, I'll just do something basic for now. I mean, mine usually doesn't do this either, but... I've already had a migraine today, so I'm sure plenty of other things can go wrong with the last Autodesk stream. <laughs> Everything is going wrong on the on the last stream for some reason. I'm sure my computer will just explode now in front of me. Uh, something simple like that would be fine. It's the Fall Guys update? Probably. Let's turn all this stuff off, that might make it easier. No, even that doesn't change anything. Actually, no, it's still delayed. Whatever, it's fine. Yeah, I'm going to add something like this, just because it... I personally, when I rendered it, I didn't like the gap, so I'm going to put it here. Maybe a memory leak? Maybe. I was always surprised in general how how much Firefox and Chrome uses up. The thing is I have no choice but to have that stuff open when I stream. Also streaming doesn't help. I know streaming doesn't help the computer sometimes. Especially after two hours. Yeah, I'm, I'm using Firefox now because I tried to not use Chrome anymore. I don't know if it's any different. <laughs> the thing is, I have to have Chrome open. I mean, not Chrome. I have to have a browser open so I can read the chat. Firefox is better. Yeah, I have Firefox. I don't know how much better it is. Though. But yeah, so this is pretty much what happens. Like, the client will ask for something. We'll do the change the client wants. But the model's been textured, so we can't touch the model. And we're going to try and put this in without breaking everything else. I mean, this isn't bad. This is a pretty easy asset. I mean, a pretty easy change. I can read the chat in OBS. I actually can't. I know this sounds really dumb. I'll show you why. So I have Streamlabs here, right? So I have my Maya, and then I have Streamlabs next to it. You can't access the chat in Streamlabs unless this is open to a specific width. Where the hell's the width? This, it has to be this wide to read the chat. And this doesn't fit on my screen. So I could do this, but I have to have this. Yeah, it just gets annoying. So this is how... <laughs> I know, it's really dumb. I, I wish I could just put the chat here. Because I don't, I don't care about this information. But yeah, maybe I should try that. I was hoping Firefox would just be better. Wait. Okay, whoa, as soon as I click this piece, it slows down. What's up with this piece? Anyway, whatever, it's fine. So since I'm going to put that one in here as well... Oh, God. We were so close to finishing the asset, and then things, every, things started slowing down. Yo, we're doing not too bad. 
Isn't streamlined just OBS with a Chromium wrapper? I have no idea. I just use this one because that's what I started with. Alright, let's cut this. Gil tells me there's a setting for... Oh, really? Alright, maybe I should just do that then. Because that would help if I don't actually have to have Streamlabs. I mean, don't have to have internet open. Yeah, very short. Cool, so that's like that. Oh, I got rid of my thing. Whatever, it's fine. Duplicate it, go down. OBS Live looks more appealing. What is that? I don't know. I've always just used OBS, I mean Streamlabs, for the last year. So I don't really feel the need to change. Oh, I'm in the wrong space. Uh, the editor, flip on V. You find the chat awful on streamers? I don't know if there's really a difference. <laughs> yeah, so the hypothetical situation is the client made a change. We made the change. We now get our geo. We find where we need to put it. So this is going to go into the engine body. Like that. And then we just add the name to here. So we can do 14. And then the body group is here. So we would try and keep it in the same area. There's a convenient spot right there. Just double check it's not overlapping anything else. No, it doesn't look that way. Cool. Yeah, the reason we keep everything left and right is because we can flip between left and right very easily. So, once we know all UVs are done, everything's nice, what I usually do is I put everything to the default uh, shader. So just go like favorite, Lambert. And then we can come up here to the hypergraph, or hypershade, I mean, and just remove unused shaders. Really unused those. Where are my notes? Oh, it doesn't want to show me materials for some reason. <laughs> okay. Anyway, we have basic materials done. And that's it. We've pretty much uh, finished our asset. We just reflip it over again. Freeze, reset, and let's see. Oh, that's right.
So yeah, this is how we usually do changes. Well, for me personally, I always just delete one side, do the change, add the geo we need to, do the UVs, and then you just flip it back over again. This is why I think dividing your mesh between left, center, and right is so important this way. Do you know if exists something like a hard surface texture artist? I mean, there's definitely people that prefer, like, hard surface. I don't know if it's necessarily a specific job, though. Wait, did I press up? I did. Oh, did I not go up? That's weird. Cool. All right. And then we do the same thing again, where we just search and replace the names. Please. Yo, I'm gonna use the restroom while the search and replace does its thing. Oh yeah, it's cool. Yeah, usually in general, I don't advise doing such a massive task at once. Like, it's much easier to search and replace smaller chunks than doing all of them at once. It's just because we have so many individual pieces that make it much harder. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We've we finished the asset. Save this. So yeah, we uh we have our nice. Clean topology, we have no end guns, we have frozen and reset all the transforms. So everything everything is like the pivot is at the origin. The UVs are all good. We've put the default shader back on. I mean depending on what studio you're at, they might want specific shaders, but usually what happens is we usually just check it into the pipeline with the default shader. We have our, our nice little UVs. Oh. Yeah, that's it. We have our nice hierarchy. Everything's broken between left, center, right. And within that, we have our nice organized uh, naming. And that's it. So we, we somehow did this in 30 hours. That's That's pretty impressive. I... <laughs> I'm legit surprised we did this much in 30 hours. But um, yeah, do it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, thanks. So yeah, obviously this stream isn't necessarily like it. I mean, this series wasn't necessarily like a series on modeling. It was more a series on like production thinking of like how to organize yourself, be efficient, cut corners.
Yeah. Does anyone have any any last minute questions for the last fifteen minutes or well, twenty minutes of the stream? I guess. But yeah, if anyone missed any of the streams, it'll all be on YouTube. Um, on ArtStation, I'll probably obviously do a post with everything, all the UVs and hierarchy and stuff like that. And this is a pretty accurate simulation of what it is like for us to work in the industry. All the Myers in the chat is pretty funny. The flipped UV is not a problem. Not usually. Depends what studio you're at. Sometimes they might flip them, but most times texture artists don't flip them. They'd rather just transfer up things easier. Is this my original design? Yes, it's my original design. But yeah, definitely, definitely thank you to Autodesk for, um, for sponsoring the stream and reaching out. It was super cool. Yeah, so a lot of this was also about thinking about artists downstream as well. It's not just about modeling. Like, that's the thing, right? We're, when we're working these big projects, we aren't isolated to our own little disciplines. We, we have to work as a team with the other artists. So a lot of our methods are to help other people. It's not just about, look at my nice topology. Yeah, I'm glad you uh, you guys enjoyed this. Does anyone have any any last minute questions before we uh, we end the Autodesk stream for good? Unless we do some more in the future. Maya Master Race. All right, settle down, channel. It's just the software, but it's the software you need to know if you want to work on like Star Wars and stuff. But yeah, like the first, like when I was at MPC, I always flipped the UVs, but after leaving MPC, like ILM and stuff and DNEG, the texture artist didn't flip the UVs. I, it's just their personal preference. If you need to, we can always just flip all the UDMs if we want to. When will be the next folio reviews? I don't know. The, the hard thing with the folio reviews is it's based on people sending me their folios. And last time we tried to do it, not many people sent them. Like, getting me doing follow reviews isn't too hard. It's more if I go to the effort of scheduling a guest, it's harder. Mario handles flip UVs. Thank God, stealing knowledge is not punishable by law. Well, that's the thing, right? Like... Everything I, a lot of the stuff I did on the stream, you won't find in a modeling tutorial. Like, I don't know if there's any tutorials that actually cover this sort of thing. Like, that's also why I decided to do this for the streams. Like, I didn't feel there's really a point of me just doing another generic, like, we're going to model a lamp thing. Because there's plenty of those out there. This was more an insight into production thinking. Which no, I don't think any tutorials really cover. Uh, the streams really help you be confident on my first job. Oh, for sure. Like if you, if your portfolio has demonstrations of this, you automatically are above a lot of people. I feel. Like if you not only have a nice, pretty render, but you show like you have a nice, structured, organized hierarchy. Your UVs are done in a very logical way it gives you a massive edge over someone with just a pretty render because this is more important like doing this this is much more important than just making a pretty render at the end of the day like like no one cares if you can sculpt a cool looking dragon but you're going to screw everyone else in the pipeline <laughs> and you you don't care about other disciplines should you just show a showcase a screenshot of your outliner sure i'm gonna do that probably they're, they're on my YouTube. Do I have, like, a YouTube command channel? <laughs> yeah, how's it going? Yeah, so I'm going to do a demonstration of this on ArtStation. I'm going to post, like, screenshots. So on my ArtStation, I'm going to do a post where I have, like, you know, the grey render, wireframe, um, 
the texture material like checker on hierarchy so the way i demonstrate this on my art station when i do it will be a pretty good way of students to do it so definitely keep an eye out on my art station and follow me there if you haven't because that's probably where you can see the best way i feel of presenting this sort of stuff yeah definitely go to my art station and follow it i don't know when i'll do the post probably tomorrow or end of today this is too 3d port <laughs> is it bad to have end gons and flat surfaces in a portfolio wireframe i th i would say yes just because it's not hard to not have end gons and if a modeler like supervisor looks and sees end gons all over your mesh they might just think you're a lazy modeler and they might just not consider you for the job. Also, it depends. We're talking about film. So, in games, I know they don't care about N-Gons because they usually just bake down the high-res information to a low-res mesh. But in film, the high-res mesh is our final product, so it has to be a clean mesh. Yo, CG Rockstar, how's it going, man? After almost 10 streams, I've realized this topology is basically just slightly better than Z Remesh Topo. Uh, okay, if you say so. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what you're expecting. Uh, let's see. Um, but yeah, we're going for two and a half hours, so I'll probably. Yo, how's it going, Noob Life? You hopped in for literally the the last second of the stream. Did you did you guys want to play Fall Guys? Because we've finished the asset now. I mean, in reality, we could always just keep adding more detail, but I don't know if at this point it really matters. He said, Maya at the studio is very different from Maya at home. What would be an example? Um, so, like, using Maya itself is the same. But, like, at the moment you see here, I have one custom tool. <laughs> but at work, you would have, like, you have rows and rows of custom pipeline tools. And that's just modeling. Every single discipline has like rows of pipe their own pipeline tools. You're Miguel though. <laughs> Jeez. That's what I mean by Maya is different. It's there's a lot of proprietary stuff. So yeah, imagine like this, I click this and I get my little script for my renamer. So imagine this time is like 500. <laughs> Plus we also, like when we check things into pipelines, in the attribute, oh shit, I better not select everything. So when we check stuff into the pipelines in studios, like in the attribute editor, we usually have extra information that's not on other, it's not in basic Myers. Is there a default export format? Um, I don't know, I'm not part of the pipeline team, so I don't know how it goes into the pipeline. Do you have an example of a plugin tool that would be made for a custom pipeline? I mean, this is the most obvious one. Eric, Eric made his own renaming tool, which is kind of similar to the sort of stuff we have at work. Like something like this is a very prime example. And like, for example, we have, like, I'm talking in very general terms as well, by the way. I'm not talking about specific, uh, specific studio, but like a lot of studios will have like tools that will apply attributes to pieces that will affect other disciplines. Like, say, for example, we can apply a subdivision tag and stuff like that. Can we see that without the wireframe? Sure. That's 
without the wireframe. Final stream. Now this is the final. This is the final Autodesk stream. And then we uh, we're probably doing. We've been doing ZBrush stuff. It's alright. If you guys are more interested in this sort of stuff, maybe we can do more Autodesk based stuff in the future. I mean, it's not like we're never going to use Maya again. We're just not going to do a sponsored Autodesk stream. How big step is it to go from modeler to 3D concept? Pay-wise, probably not that different, I guess. Unless you are Vitaly. <laughs> I mean, Vitaly, I'm sure, can pay, gets paid quite well. But if you're just a standard concept artist, you're probably not going to be paid that much more than, than I would be. Um, how big is the... Is, how big of a step is it? I have no idea. I haven't done that step before. It's just a different job. It's not necessarily like a concept artist is above a production artist. They're just different jobs. If you want to do the 3D concept, go the 3D concept route. And skill-wise, I think it's just a different skill. Like, for some reason, a lot of people put different disciplines on top of each other, but they're just different skills. Like, for some reason, I know people think of character artists as being more skilled than hard surface, but I, I totally disagree with that. It's just a different skill. If I put the effort I put into hard surface into character, I would be at the same level as them with characters. That's all it is. It's just, it's just training and skills. Just do, do the discipline you want. Um, for portfolio making a model with different states of damage, does it add a lot of points to get a job? It definitely can add some points. If you can show you can do a damaged version and retain your, your textures, that's definitely a big plus. Yeah, catch you later, Grover. Just wondering how modern characters in Maya is. Uh, I've never modeled a character in Maya, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've modeled Transformers, but that's just, I guess that's a character. Are we going to do some Fall Guys afterwards? I don't know, do you guys want to do some Fall Guys? Kind of tired. <laughs> Hard surface characters. Can I still see? I can see now. I've got my vision back. <laughs> Yo, Michael. Michael, are you still around? You are. I see you in the chat. Are you lurking? Um, is Arvis still going to texture it? I mean, they can if they want. I we've never actually spoken about doing it, but if you wanted to texture us, that would that would be awesome. I know Zach Boxel has expressed interest in texturing it, so maybe Zach could do it. Well, I mean, the UV is all done, so I'm sure. You'd be happy. It's arguably easier to get into hard surface since anatomy is considered one of the hardest topics to learn. I don't know about that. I I wouldn't argue that. There's there's plenty of people. There's 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 plenty of um people that are like character artists that don't understand how like robotics or joints work. It's just it's just another skill. Yeah, honestly, I don't I think people shouldn't think that way anyway. I don't think you should feel you're superior because you're in a specific discipline. Because guaranteed that other discipline knows a lot more about something you do not know about. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Michael, you still around? Yeah, there's only a few minutes left, so maybe if anyone has any... Yo, Michael, let's play some Fall Guys. That oh, fucking mate. But yeah, I'll, I'll wrap up the Auditor stream 
very soon. If anyone, does anyone have any last minute Autodesk questions? You yourself you use ZBrush, Houdini, Mari, and some other programs. That's cool. But yeah, if anyone has any last minute Autodesk, not Autodesk, if anyone has any last minute questions for the Autodesk stream, let's uh, feel free to reach out and I'll probably cut the stream. And then we can do some. What's it called? We can do some. Oh, guys. Can Autodesk, I mean, Autodesk is a, a company I don't know about. Can Autodesk convert Polygon model to CAD model? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I've never tried to go from Poly to CAD. Can? Okay, fair enough. For prop design, can you use my own key shot for showing off props? Sure. I mean, for design, all that matters is the end render. It doesn't matter how you get there. For design, at least. Production, like working as a production artist and design is completely different. But only once? Do you own a Maya license? Of course I own a Maya license. <laughs> Oh, do you mean? Sorry, sorry, I get what you mean. Yeah, I'm on the Maya Indie. I, th I thought you meant like, am I like using cracked Maya? I was like, wait, what? <laughs> no. It seems like people extrude a cylinder and say hard surface is easy. Exactly. What are the must have? Um, types of models for a hard surface folio. I, I'll show you what I think a good a good hard surface model is. Um, I'll show you. Uh, let's see. So what's his name? The dude that works at Dice. The helicopter is one of them. Yeah, Blackhawk. Uh, I've, I've, with the Blackhawk. We're forgetting about the Blackhawk. The uh, motorbike is now the, the new, the new thing. I think you should make. <laughs> Fuck, what's his name? I know his first name's Andreas. What's this? You guys know who I'm talking about? The guy that makes really nice uh, photo real cars. The dude works at Dice. Maybe let's just look up Battlefront. Yeah, this dude, Andreas Ezelius. This dude, okay. So if you want to make like a, a good hard surface folio, I think like doing what this guy does is good. So I think something like a motorbike is really, really good. Just because it has a variety of different forms. Like, you have a lot of really nice, sleek, elegant forms. You have the more complex machinery parts. You have things like a tire. You have different materials. I think something like this is a really good folio piece. Just because it has a variety of different um, treatments and shapes. So if you want a good hard surface thing, I think something like this is really good. Because it has such variety. You can show off a lot of skills at once. But yeah, I'll definitely post his stuff in the chat. Whew. But yeah, I'm going to probably call it the stream now. And, uh... Yeah, I'm probably going to call the stream now. But we'll do... Some full guys, so you know, hang around for a bit, and we can, um, yeah, we can play some more full guys. But yeah, thanks for tuning in to the audio stream, guys. We really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, stick around for some full guys. <laughs>